and welcome to SI Imaging. In today's tutorial on Aura Software, we're going to demonstrate some of the essential analytical features of Aura that will allow you to quantify and to characterize optical signal data in images that you have previously acquired with your Kino, Amy HTX, or LogOX systems. Now, what we are looking at here is the homepage of the latest version of Aura, that is Aura 4.0. And if you haven't had an opportunity yet to download this latest version of Aura, I would strongly recommend that you do uh, for the following reasons. It has an overall simplified template, uh, as you will see when we start using the analytical tools here off to the left. It also has uh, newly developed ROI analytical features, region of interest analysis features, uh, that I think you will find convenient. As always, the Aura analytical versions of our software platform are available to you for free, and you can simply download them by going to our webpage, spectralinvivo.com, selecting on the software tab, scrolling down, and asking for a installer of the software. All right, so let's begin the process of demonstrating the various analytical techniques that are available on the Aura software platform by loading up some image files. There are essentially two ways to load data. You go to File and select Load Images, or you go to File and select Image Manager. Load Images is a standard approach for accessing and loading data. You simply are brought to the, the files on your hard drive and you can access uh, specific folders of interest and then load up that data. And what you have to go by are the file folder names and the file names themselves. And there are limited descriptors there um, that will give you date and time and the folders can be named appropriately uh, according to your your method however uh, there's a lot of the camera uh, settings and some of the metadata associated with the files that's not available to you uh, in the process of pulling these images up having access to this kind of data it can be useful in the process of selecting the exact image files that you want to work with and let's demonstrate that by going to image manager which does allow you to access such uh, camera setting and metadata file information. So let's say we're interested in looking at some BLI uh, images, which I've collected. And uh, in the BLI folder, there are uh, going to be a set of files, all of which can be segregated on the basis of these parameters from date, binning, exposure time, FOV, um, and various metadata parameters. Uh, associated with those images. And if I'm interested in, let's say, only using data from that particular date uh, with this particular bin level, uh, I can go ahead and segregate from that folder those exact files. And here we are. We have one set of images. I say set uh, in that there is a plus sign here at the front of the file name. And that indicates that there is, in fact, a group acquire with multiple images uh, in this uh, line. Uh, and I can access each of the images within the group acquire by clicking on the plus sign and seeing them listed here down below. There appears to be six images, and these are their various camera settings and file names and uh, various uh, metadata descriptors. All right, so let's go ahead and minimize these images again. And before opening, I want to point out the fact that there are a bunch of features in Image Manager that allow you to uh, further manage uh, the organization of your files, where you can group individual images, you can add images to a group, and we'll be discussing some of these features later on. All right, so let's load this set of group acquired images by clicking on Load Selected. Okay, so here are the six images. They're numbered one through six. Check out the lower left-hand corner, uh, the green triangle area, 
it helps keep the files organized. And we are now ready to begin our analysis of the optical image data. Now, one of the first analytical procedures to do with your images is to quantify the optical signal in your images. And this can be readily done by using a region of interest or ROI analytical approach. To draw a region of interest, go down to toolbox, down to measure, and select one of the ROI drawing tools. You can draw rectangular ROIs, uh, elliptical ROIs, freehand ROIs. And when you're doing analyses of 96 well plates, you can actually do a grid ROI analysis. And we can demonstrate that later on. So for now, given the fact that we have essentially a circular signal coming from each of the mice, and by the way, what we're looking at here, as far as a model goes, is an ectopic tumor of bioluminescent cells in the subcutaneous space above the right thigh of these mice. We'll go ahead and select the circular ROI. And to more easily draw the ROI, one can zoom into any one image and draw the ROIs in an enlarged image. So I'm going to double click on this top left image. And now we can begin to draw an ROI over the right thigh of the mouse. And I'm making it large enough so that it will encompass all of uh, these signals on the, on the mice to the right. We can position that accordingly. And now what you can do is copy paste by double clicking inside the ROI. You can see the activation of the ROI by the squares at the north, south, east, west ordinates of the circular ROI. And right mouse click copy go outside of the ROI, right mouse click, paste ROI. All right, so there we are. We've drawn all the regions of interest to go ahead and quantify signal in the mice. We can go ahead and add one final ROI that we can use as a means of evaluating the signal away from the mice as background. And we are now ready basically to do a summary analysis of the, the data that we've acquired through the use of ROIs. Now, given that we are uh, doing an evaluation of a bioluminescent image, the data here for the signal of each pixel in the image is expressed in terms of radians, where radians is a compound unit basically standing for photons per second per centimeter squared per steradian. And when you do an ROI analysis, the area components of radians get canceled out. And so what you're left with is total photons per second. And that indeed is what these numbers per ROI stand for, the total number of photons per second within the ROI. And you can visually summarize this in a table format by going down to toolbox and measurements and clicking on the ruler icon. And this will now give you all of the ROI data in a summary table format. And there are various parameters that you can access by going to edit columns and choosing the parameters that may be of interest to you, not only quantitative aspects of the data, but various metadata uh, associated with the image acquisition. And I invite you to check this out. Now, for the purposes of saving this data, what you can do is save it as a CSV file and load it up uh, into Excel at your leisure for further uh, quantitative evaluation. And as noted previously, the data that parameter that you will want to use for the evaluation of signal quantification is total emission in units of photons per second presented here. Now, a final note on the data presented here in Measurement Manager. We are not simply looking at the ROI data from image one. Remembering that image one is part of a group acquire, a set of six overall images, 
uh, the ROIs have been applied across all six images. And you can see that here in Measurement Manager that the image number ranges from one to six. And indeed, when you go ahead and uh, zoom back out, what you can see is that the ROIs drawn in image one have indeed been applied across the entire group acquired set of images, images one through six. Now, on many occasions, investigators have the desire to go ahead and save the ROI analysis that they've done. And in Aura, this is readily doable through a feature known as Save Experiment. Simply go to File, down to Save Experiment, and you will uh, be saving the composite of the ROI analysis superimposed on your original .amy files in the form of a .aura file. So by way of example, We can go ahead and save the ROI analysis. And by way of proof of concept, we can go ahead now and clear the table and bring the images back, specifically bring the .aura uh, save experiment files back. So to select all the images for easy clearance, go ahead and click select all. This will cause all the images to be selected as indicated here by the top left uh, green triangle. You can go to File, Unload Selected, File, Load Experiment, and now what we'll see is that we have all six images with not only the optical data but the superimposed ROI analysis. All right, now having done a preliminary ROI analysis of the optical data in your images. You may want to go one step further and determine whether or not there are low level signals in your image that simply aren't being captured because of the default color range threshold being used to set the dynamic range of the signal intensity presented. If you look over to the left here, the automated color range threshold is well above zero and one can go ahead and do an exhaustive search for data by simply adjusting the color range threshold to zero and the color range minimum of your calibration bar to zero. So let's go ahead and double click on the top left image. We can adjust the color range minimum to zero and the color range threshold to zero. And now we have a fuller presentation of the data that is actually in your image file. You can see all of the low level background signal throughout the image. And the big reveal here is that there are above background signals from the ectopic tumors of the mice on the left hand side that we could not see before when we had an elevated color range threshold. Now that it's down to zero, we can see them and we can adjust that color range threshold so that they remain visible. Now, this can be done by adjusting the color range threshold either through the uh, sliding bar or by entering in a specific value. What I typically do is I'll adjust the uh, threshold with the sliding bar to an approximately correct value and then enter in a final value in the type in window. So something on the order of six point, let's say 6.5 times 10 to the fourth to make it a simple number. And then I'll enter in the same value for the color range minimum so that there's a correspondence between the threshold and the minimum of the calibration bar. Fantastic. And finally, to again, have a dynamic range that is uh, some easy number 
to report on. We can adjust the maximum here to, let's say, 1.5 e to the 7, and that will give us a 2.5 log dynamic range. So, in the process of getting the color range minimum and threshold down to zero, we have successfully found low level signal intensity data in some of the mice and have adjusted the uh, threshold and min to lower levels and now have a fuller presentation of all of the above background data that's actually in the image. Now it's important to realize that in changing the threshold value and the minimum and max of the calibration bar, I have not changed, we should say our analysis has not changed any aspect of the file. The data remains the same. It's just the presentation of the data that has changed. And you'll note that the ROI values have not changed because we have not changed the size of the ROIs to account for the new data uh, that we consider to be relevant. Now, what I could do here is go ahead and clear the ROIs and then replace them with ROIs that would in fact capture um, all of the relevant data. What I'm going to do is actually switch gears a little bit and show you how to do whole mouse ROIs, which will capture all of the data, uh, regardless of the threshold that one tends to use in the end. So first off, we need to get rid of the uh, preliminary ROIs, and that can be readily done by right mouse clicking and delete all ROIs. And now we'll just go ahead and go back down to toolbox, measure, use the rectangular ROI, And again, do the copy paste as we did before with the elliptical ROI. So now we have uh, total mouse ROIs that capture all of the signal from the mice. And we can go ahead and export this as we did before. The uh, ROI values that is by going to toolbox, measurements, ruler icon, and exporting the data as a CSV file. One thing to make note of is that the data that we've been, uh, I should say the ROI analysis of the data that we've been doing here uh, has not only been done to image one. Because this is uh, an image that's within a group acquired set of images, if we go back out, we'll see that the ROIs have indeed been applied to all six images. Furthermore, one can update the threshold adjust that we did on the single image by now clicking on select all. And that new dynamic range will now be applied to all of the images being presented. This is a good time after having done this amount of work with the ROIs to do two things. One is you could probably go ahead and resave the experiment. And we could use the same name perhaps with underscore final. Secondarily, um, for future studies or for future time points in this study, it would be useful to apply the ROIs that we've drawn here to uh, the mouse images at future time points. This can readily be done as well. Let's go ahead and single click on this image and go to measure save ROIs to file, we'll say image one, it could be any one of the images in fact, continue and give it a name, we'll call it 10 mouse ROI and hit okay for that, it is a saved set of ROIs that can be applied to future image files. Let's go ahead by way of proof of concept, we can go back out, we could have done this in either uh, uh, zoomed in or zoomed out uh, scenario. We can go ahead and delete all ROIs. And now go to measure where, whereas 
Previously, we had just saved the ROIs to file. We can go to Restore ROIs from File and hit Restore ROIs. And there you are. So that is a nice time save when it comes to applying ROIs to multiple time points of require images or single images uh, in a time core study. One final activity that, of course, um, most investigators will do is to go ahead and take a picture of the images that they've done their ROI analysis on. And let's first get our finalized dynamic range um, to be presented. And the way one takes a picture of these images is to go ahead to File and do Save Graphic. Okay, you can save it to where you want as a JPEG. Go ahead and make use of that image for any kind of presentation purposes or lab notes that, that you may need to, to keep. So in today's imaging tutorial, we have reviewed a range of analytical protocols that are available to you on the Aura 4.0 analysis software platform for the purposes of analyzing your image data. The topics addressed are listed here. We started off with an introduction to the fact that there are new features on the Aura 4.0 analysis software platform, specifically the outlay of the platform and the fact that there were new ROI analytical features that we were then going to discuss. We showed how to download the Aura 4.0 analysis software for free off of our SI Imaging webpage. And then we started off the analytical process by showing how to load SI imaging files, .ami files, and to conduct region of interest or ROI analyses. We then specifically demonstrated how to draw and copy and paste sets of ROIs for the purposes of rapid ROI analyses. And once ROIs were set, how to see summary tables of the ROI data generated and how to export them as CSV files that could then later be loaded up into platforms like Excel and saved as data worksheets for further analysis. We showed then also how once a final ROI analysis was completed, how it could be saved with the image file as a .aura file and then reloaded when needed for evaluation or perhaps improvement on the ROI analysis done. We also addressed a nuanced advanced topic, if you will, on how to optimize the dynamic range of the optical data that is presented in your images for the purposes of potentially identifying low level signal data that you may want to include in your overall analysis. We also showed how to save and restore ROI sets across multiple image files so that you wouldn't have to always redraw the ROI sets that you had made. And finally, we showed a record keeping um, protocol for how to export pictures, JPEGs, etc., of your image files for um, the purposes of future reference or presentation. I want to thank you for your attention and here's to great imaging.